What's up? Hey everyone! Stop motion animation! Yay! So yeah, we just got out of Kubo and the two strings, which why did they have that as a secondary title? He clearly has three strings throughout most of the movie. Well, it's symbolic. Yep. Yes, it is, because of his parents. Dude, Dude, Dude spoilers! Well, he, they already see his mom in the movie, so it's going to be... And I didn't directly say how it relates. Anyway, yeah, so Laika's new feature, I think for coming out four years after their, personally, I think their biggest work, uh, Paranorman, and uh, before that, it was Coraline, which I have not seen, he has seen. I love it, but I also read the book. Really, okay. Really good. I, I saw Paranorman, loved that. I saw Paranorman, I mostly just thought it was alright. My Most of my issues nobody really cares about. Um, and then there's Box Trolls, which neither of us have seen. Although I've heard good things. Although, I think the design of, like, that boy in Box Trolls, he, for some reason, he looks really similar to Kubo in this. Yeah, he does. So, yeah, this is, honestly, this is going to be really tricky to talk about. For me, at least. For you, you know, here's the, here's the thing. It's movies like this that really irritate the piss out of me because it is so, so close to greatness. But ultimately, it's just good. I know, I know that's really odd. It's like, what? It's, it's a good movie, but you're, but you're annoyed? It's like, yeah, because this movie was so close to being amazing in so many aspects and it gets so many things right and it does so good with them but it it also very very quickly throws it away for a lot of different things in in a lot of different parts of this movie it had me like slapping my head going what what the hell are you doing movie so yeah big shot comedy snob hates the comedy in this <sighs> I think anyone would hate the comedy in this because I th see I thought some of it was okay. I thought a handful of it was okay. Matthew McConaughey was not that bad. Matthew McConaughey is annoying as fuck in this movie. No, he's not. He I, plays it so cool that he does not. Yes, he does. He does not. He plays the same sort of dopey ass. Oh, I'm the big guy and I don't know shit. Well, I like I like the monkey, the monkey's form of comedy because she's got kind of that no bull, take no bullshit attitude. So that's, mm -hmm. so that much is nice. And plus she has an off switch. She knows how to flip like, you know, she, she knows how to flip with the tone of the movie, the tone of the scene, that what everything has been set. Beetle, the, the character, Matthew McConaughey's character never does. He is. He, do, he does. He, he is. He actually has genuine conversation with Monkey once in a while. Once. Once in the entire movie does he have a genuine conversation. The rest of it is just stupid joke, stupid joke, stupid joke. <sighs> but he's a, he's awesome with a bow and arrow. At least he could still back it up be, with like fighting. He should be good, like like good on paper, like a useful character in in the story. But he's really not. And it makes even less sense when it's revealed when it's revealed who he actually is. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Story, and that's one thing that this movie prides on so much. But it's a story about a storyteller. Yep, Kubo's a storyteller, and his and his tales are something that luck like, hopefully gets him money whenever he goes into this local town where. Right outside of where him and his mother stay in a cave, uh, he soon learn he soon learns of his destiny when he hears about how his mother broke away from uh, her family's destiny and created her created her own with hit with her husband and Kubo her son. As soon as her family catches up to Kubo, it's up to him to find three pieces of armor. A helmet, a breastplate, and a sword, all with um, impeccable qualities. And with the in, power to kill a god. Yes, that ultimately. Mm -hmm. And on along the way, he has monkey and beetle in order to 
guide him, protect him, all that jazz. Where you, where I thought you would hate it, I was disappointed by it. For me, this story had no surprises. Like I think the story. Okay, here's the thing with me. While while yes, the story is at least kind of predictable. It's not condescending. That's the that for me is far more important than whether or not the story itself is original or. Um, fuck, I can't think of it. I can't think of the word, but. But for me, anyways, the story here is solid, and a lot of the characters themselves, the amount of the... <laughs> actually, no, it's it's more the world that they've that they've set up is actually really good because it's not like it's not like in other cartoons where violence has absolutely no consequence in this. In fact, the opening sets it up perfectly mm -hmm. when uh, you see his when you see his mother. Uh, out out on the ocean and she gets swallowed by a wave and then basically smacks her head on the ocean floor and then she's got one big one big cuts along <laughs> her face she's scar woman yeah it's you know again that that to me is shocking because in most most uh, these uh, kids fantasy epics characters can't get hurt no no one's uh no one's allowed to die. You can't. You can't breathe any mention of death whatsoever. Whereas this, that's kind of an overarching theme of this movie, which is, you know, again something I really like. This movie just does so many things well. It, you know what it really reminds me of more than anything is a Samurai Jack episode. And I never, I never saw Samurai Jack, unfortunately. Samurai Jack is one of my all-time favorite cartoons, and the opening of this. They're bringing you back. I, I know, and I'm very excited for that. Hmm. Um, the opening of this, the first, like, uh, ten minutes, almost, besides besides the narr a little bit of a narration from Kubo, is all just complete visual storytelling. It's, it's slow, it's atmospheric, mm -hmm. and it just, it's so perfectly paced, and the dialogue and everything about it just works so well. And then, and then when... Then when shit starts happening, when uh, yes, yeah, when it actually gets st when stuff actually gets started. When st I I don't want to I don't like saying that because it makes it seem like nothing's happened up to this point. Uh, yes, so you need setup and you need atmosphere. It does a very 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 fucking good job with it. I want to make that clear because it is, it, I like I said, it is slow, well paced. And most mostly told visually, mostly. It's only when we get introduced to our uh, secondary main characters, Monkey and Beetle, does this movie v quickly turn into kind of a dopey ass kids movie. It's not okay. I my gripe with you mostly regarding like kids movies is that. I constantly see you as oh if there's any form of lightheartedness then it no, then it's bad. Nope, 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 no, and I want to make that clear. I have nothing against movies being lighthearted. I have trouble with movies ham-fisting comedy into situations that they absolutely are completely unnecessary just because you think, well, if we don't do this, the kids are going to get bored. Can I say one thing? Going back to the opening for a second, because I mentioned that, the the opening narration is Kubo basically saying, uh, to all you fucking millennials out there, uh, if you if you're not Don't in, blink. if you're not interested in slow moving, well paced movies, then you can fuck right off because you know this that's what that's what we're going for in this. Well, he kind of lied because it's not where it goes towards the middle. But, yeah. but even then, I kind of like that because the kid next to me was practically half asleep. Well, next to you, the one next to me wouldn't shut up. Yeah, I heard her too. It God. was a, it was a boy. It was a boy. Yes. Wow. Yeah, there was this kid next to me who had to constantly ask his dad, like every single time an important moment happened, and the screen Daddy, cuts to black. Uh, he, yeah, she, he cried because of so and so. I oh, I wanted to turn over to him and just do this, but I didn't want to look like a jackass. Really? 
His dad, I, I saw his dad constantly try and quiet him down, but I felt like you when we saw just... the Lego movie <laughs> with, like, please be quiet. I just please. Lean, I just lean over to him. Kid, will you kindly shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty much. Yeah. I don't think we've had a movie like this for a while where you and I are kind of pretty split. Oh, I think you liked this more than me. I thought this was just all right. Okay. I thought this was just okay. And I personally see this like a f some other people saw Big Hero Six. For me, this the reason the main downfall is the way is the way the story is told, and and just all the events that happen. There wasn't that many surprises, and yes. Well, predictability is a little bit of my downfall. If I can see what's coming, then what's the point of still showing it if we know what's going to happen? Yes, there we characters are revealed to be important people, and I even turned over to you and I said, "Not surprising at all." And that, and I, and I can definitely see that. I, me, for me anyway, I. It, it doesn't bother me as much as long as it's done right. Like, it's if it's predictable, that's one thing. But if it's done in a way where it's like, oh, my oh my God, isn't, it, isn't that amazing? Kind of, it, that kind of way. If it's stupid, if, if it's a surprise and it's stupid, that doesn't make it any better. That makes, but, that makes it but the re But the yeah. reason that I was a little disappointed with this is because, well, again, I'm basing off of Paranorman. That had, that had common, like, source material. But it gave, but it gave us such different twist on it that it made me appreciate it more the way that they told the story. With this one, where they focus so much on story, they couldn't really provide that many like good surprises. That was where, that was where I found fault with this. And, but one thing that. I'm gonna bring up, but you always overlook. This looks amazing. Oh, the anime, listen, I was not going to overlook that. No, but you always, but you always say, "Oh, I don't care how it looks. I care about so. I care about like the logistics." Now, again, I'm not trying to rip on you, but what I'm, what the, I think, what I mean, what what I mean by that, not necessarily that I don't credit a movie when it's when it looks good, but for a lot of people, they're like. Well, that's what saves the movie for me. No, it doesn't matter how good a movie looks. If it's got shitty characters and a shitty story, I don't care. But looks good. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is, is that it can't... Looks can't save a movie. Uh, it, 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 the writing and characters come first. If it looks good, that's a bonus for me. Okay, the characters and the look were what saved it for me. I actually do... I do... <laughs> I liked Beetle. I liked um, Beetle, and it's Matthew McConaughey. I think. Well, he's on the biggest upswing of you his should, career. You should know I have nothing against Matthew McConaughey, but he is annoying as fuck in this. He movie. is not. Well, for me, he wasn't annoying at all. He was. He was playing the, just the, the overzealous protector who doesn't know who the, doesn't know the most. The dopey ass big guy who. But he's oh, but gosh. at least but at least he's still passionate about wanting to be about wanting to be around. No, Look, he is not. He yes, is he so, is. He is oblivious to everything around him. Because well, uh, I can't talk about his character without spoiling some stuff. But I no, he's shush. Okay. I still really liked him because he had a passion to him. He was he was still fun to be around. He wasn't annoying for me. He is. He is the worst kind of comedic reliefs. The ones that feel intrusive to the story. The ones that feel like they are deliberately trying to dumb it down and make it so easily digestive. Giving something for the kids to cling on to so everything is so much more digestible. It, that's what I hate about his character, okay? Because he's every time he is on screen, even in the face of death, He's like, oh, it's like he has some stupid joke, some stupid one line. There's there, there's one part where they're fighting a giant monster. They almost get stepped on. So he's like, oh, foot, and that's oh that whole that whole bit. It should have been an amazing scene, them fighting a giant monster, but it was just so annoying because of Beetle. It was oh god, that's he single-handedly 
keeps this movie from being amazing in my mind. No, if he, if he, you can't you can't pin yes, a whole movie on one character. Yes, I can. When we spend the majority of the movie with that character, I absolutely can. When that movie puts that character in the front and makes him part of the main cast, yes, I can. Picky bastard. Uh, uh, it's one thing if he just had a few shitty jokes, but I did not laugh at anything he said once in this movie. I thought he was fine. Uh, Monkey, well, <laughs> Charlie's there, and she can do, she can't do any wrong. Um, Kubo was actually pre was actually pretty decent. Kubo was a great character. He he's he's how you do he's how you write kids. It's or well I mean I, I okay it depends on it obviously depends on the story the setting and everything but it's how you make kids likable and without being annoying. There's a lot of there's a lot of writers out there who seem to think that the only purpose kids serve is to be a nuisance to everybody around them and they like you can't complain because that's just kids it's like no this kid is th this kid has all the qualities of a kid but none of them are annoying he's he's curious he's um well he, he's got he's short-tempered at times mm. But he also um, he also recognizes you know taking personal responsibility. He also clearly has a heavy uh, has a heavy burden of taking care of his mother, who after that after that accident in the opening she she loses her uh, her short term memory. So every day she um, every every day she thinks, oh no, what happened to your eye? Which by the way, is very brilliantly revealed. It's, oh god, there's there's so many good things in this movie. I wish I, I wish I could just you're, say you're letting one character ruin it for you. No, I'm letting the movie itself. It's not just necessarily the character, but the movie itself can struggle with tone at times. It'll have okay, okay. it'll have that, some that, that I can actually agree with you on. The tone in this is very is it really shifty? It, it there there are some really heavy themes in this movie, but then it kind of turns around and says. Says, ha ha, we're we're fishing with arrows, kind of thing. That's that's more my problem. Is you need to you need to be able to understand tonal shift better. You need to make you need to write characters that are actually expressive and and well designed and serve more of a purpose than just to be joke jokers, essentially. So that's, I mean. Overall, this movie is is really well worth seeing. I really hope people support it because one, the studio makes great stuff. Yes, that it does, and this is the kind of animation, the the kind of animated movies I want to see more of, minus, minus all the bullshit. And yeah, that's really all the all the good stuff. I can't really say because it's mostly it's mostly towards the end, and it's spoiler heavy. Yeah, and I I do recommend seeing this, but I thought it, I, it it's just under being good, mainly just because of how mainly just because of how the story plays out. It's a great idea. Uh, it's an it's a fantastic idea with the atmos with the atmosphere of magic and wisdom and yes, heavy themes. But I just didn't like the way it played out that much. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Tonal shifts were a little bit of a problem, even though this looks fantastic. The, there also there also were some plot uh, plot holes or or things that didn't make much sense to me as well. And mo most of it has to do with um, again those spoiler heavy stuff. So the plot itself isn't perfect, but the way it's approached, at least the way I feel like it handles it, in that it you know it. it it handles it in a much more adult way than you expect. That's all I'm going to say. Yes, th okay, that is very true. It does take its audience seriously, and it and it doesn't, well, even with the uneven tone, it doesn't dumb down anything. This can be, and this can be processed by children very, this is actually a good movie for kids. Because um, they, iffy. Like I said, the kid next to me was falling asleep probably because it was too good for him. 
But it's still, but it's still something. It's still something that has very smart elements to it. Yes. And I can absolutely respect it for that. And in a kids' movie tackling the themes of death, memories, and and coping as well mm-hmm. is is a very touchy subject. But this actually does this actually does have very good execution with it. Yeah. There's there's even there's even something there's even something in the end that's especially stands out in my mind that I've I've rarely ever seen done in kids movies and I'm not it honestly I almost got a little teary eyed because of it but I was I'm I'm not gonna spoil it I really the good stuff ultimately outweighs the bad it just sucks that it couldn't it couldn't be a little bit more polished in the end I think. Regardless of what we say, go see this movie. Yes, and okay. After contemplating a little bit and talking about it, I actually, I actually should try and give this movie a little bit more credit than I have. It's just that the experience. I wish that the experience I had in there was a little bit better, but by its own merits and by like actual quality, this is actually really good. I, I again, I like you. I wish it just was a little bit more. And I can't, I can't stop thinking about how amazing this looks. The textures, the colors, the... I'm, you know, it shows how far we've gotten in stop-motion technology when you can have hair. Yes, that is true. Especially back to the days of, like, Wallace and Gromit. Oh, well, then again, that's Claymation. Yeah. Um, what other stop-motion this, well, stuff? Well, this is... Isn't this... Claymation and stop-motion are essentially the same thing, right? Not necessarily, because with claymation, you directly use clay. With stop-motion, you can use any form of figure. Oh, okay. I don't know what what else you'd use besides clay. Regardless, but, yeah, the textures, the movement in this is still really good. The action scenes look really good. Yes. Especially when they're, when they're doing this with animal, with, like, animals, figures, and the, some of the designs of, like, the villains, the, the two out of the three villains look genuinely creepy. Oh, yeah. What's, that's another thing. What's supposed to be creepy and, or what's supposed to be creepy and threatening in this world actually is. There's, that's the, that's the part when I say that it may not, it may be, uh, it may be cliched and it may be, uh, predictable, but at least it does their job right. Unlike a lot of other kids movies where it's like, Ooh, we're so scary. No, you're not. Ooga, booga, booga. It's like, yeah, or this is, this is so threatening. No, no, it's not. <laughs> No, absolutely see it. Yeah, support this, and but yeah, we saw we got into this movie late, and we saw trailers for well, the only few trailers we will we were able to see were for uh, trolls and storks. I, re- I wish we were. Which late. can you can't, we... you can't you come up with a more creative title? I really wish we came later. We were so worried about, oh no, we're gonna miss the no, first half of this no, movie. No, I I was worried you weren't. <laughs> That's because I knew we were gonna get tra- we were gonna get some really no, shitty you just, kids. You're trailers. just a goddamn bigot when it comes to kids movies nowadays. Because they suck! Because the majority of them suck. We get occasion I said this last week, we occasionally get good ones. Like Zootopia, like Inside Out. That that's because like they're this, from, that's like because they're this. From Disney and this one from an indi- Pixar. from a popular independent. Pixar. Fuck you, they're still Disney. <laughs> God, we're not gonna get back to that, but um, uh, but yeah, when you get crap like Stork, when when I see trailers for uh, okay, crap okay, like Stork, okay, even I even I have to say that Storks Storks looks dumb. Trolls what? looks Trolls, Trolls looks harmless. Looks stupid. It it's like it's like Smurfs, but without being take without taking place in New York City, and that's a bad thing. Yes, because Smurfs was fucking stupid too. Not the original cartoon. The, it was the, stupid the, because the it was stupid because they went to New York instead of stayed in the forest. So this is Smurfs, DreamWorks version. It's it still looks dumb as fuck. Uh, d- okay. What about what about that other trailer? I, I 
I feel like I feel like we've com either completely bypassed this movie, the U.S. audiences, or it still, for some reason, hasn't come out yet. But do you remember the trailer for the foosball team that wanted to become a real soccer team? I barely remember it. Okay. What did that come out last year or something? I saw a trailer for it for Inside Out. So, I either it either it has not come. No, no, to it, any theaters. We it had to have come out at least some point. Because it was last year! <laughs> that movie, uh, that is one of the most cringing trailers I've seen so much. And that's why, and see, if anyone asks, why do you hate modern animation so much? I could just, I could pull out a bundle of these fucking trailers of movies that look so stupid. But did you see Secret Life of Pets? No, and I never will. Jeez. It got good reviews. I don't care! Most... Most of these movie, Most of these kids' movies that get good reviews is under the guidance of, well, I think the kids will like it. No shit. You can dangle keys in front of them and they'll like it. That's the thing. It, as... For me, anyway, good kid... Good kid media stands out in my mind as the stuff that anyone can enjoy. Not just kids. Then again, you're still basing it off of a trailer. The, well, n n the foosball one, yes, that's stupid. But, like, the Secret Life of Pets, Trolls, those look, har well, har I'm, and I don't use harmless in, like, a, just in general term, oh, let it go, it's nice. I don't use it in that way. I use it as... It's, it still looks like an opening and uh, approachable story with, uh, and, wow, I'm kind of burying myself into a corner here, but there's still only bits and snippets of a full movie. You only get to see one or two minutes of a full movie from that one little thing. That's why I like to see the trailers and see, okay, it's, it's sales pitches. But instead of but the here, full sale. Here's the thing, Tom. Trailers. I, this is what I had to. This is what I had to explain to people for the Ghostbusters trailer. Trailers are supposed to sell you on a movie. Trailers are supposed to get you to think, "Oh, wow, that looks good." So when a trailer doesn't do that, are we really supposed to take it that? Well, I'm sure they just showed us all the bad parts and all the good parts they saved for the movie. I may be really picky when it comes to kids movies, but it's only out of a it's only out of a place of passion. I really wish we could get more of an abundance of good of of good animated movies. Not not this stupid lowest common denominator pushed out crap. Quick buck making or whatever. Yeah, making a quick buck. Even something like, even if we could get anywhere closer to, uh, like another How to Train Your Dragon, that'd be good. Another, I, I, um... Yeah, I would like that, because I love How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, How to Train Your Dragon is amazing. It's one of my favorite animated movies, period. How does this rank, like... Mm, nah, it wouldn't, it really well, wouldn't... Well, I, I know not favorite, because It wouldn't obviously. even break my top ten. Well, top ten would usually mean favorites. Okay. Well, let's say maybe top forty. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I can kind of see that. But, like, but, really, even this is for me. This isn't even better than Coraline. But it's but for you, it's better than Paranorman. It's better than Paranorman in my mind. Okay, I think Paranorman is better than this, but it, but that's that's saying a lot though. Like this is this is still close to Paranorman. I just wish they would have, like, I po I wish they would have polished the story. You wish they would have polished the tone and characters. Yeah. So, but yeah. Other than that, if you still go in this with an open mind and you actually want to process like a great idea and a great concept, and also look at some fantastic animation, mm -hmm. absolutely go. Yeah. Do you want to go into a little bit of spoilers, or...? I've, if I can talk about some of the plot holes, or things that make no sense, 
inconsistencies, then yes. I'll, we can go into a little bit of spoilers. Okay, spoilers. Stop if you don't want to know anymore. So, what happens, as you see in the trailers, is that when, um, when his, basically, his village gets attacked, burnt down, it's pretty, it's pretty brutal, um... Which they don't show. They don't show it, but you, it, they don't, they also don't try to sweep it under the rug and pretend like everybody's just playing hide and seek. That is true. So, that, that's, again, that's what I, well, that's what I like about this movie. The dangers and consequences are real. But eventually, he, uh, his, his mother, his mother uses the last of her magic to, to, uh, get him to safety. And he wakes up next to a monkey, which was a charm that his mother gave him. And it was, you know, using the last of her magic, she brought it to life and now is his protector. So they're like, we gotta find the, we gotta find the armor to, uh, we, we, we have to find the armor to save, uh, to, to, to stop the moon, the moon king? Yeah, the moon king, which is, yeah. His grandfather. Granddaddy. Yep. So, eventually they come across a beetle who claims that he was the, that, his master was Kubo's father, Hanzo. Hanzo, yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't help but keep thinking about the character from Overwatch. Don't know. Okay. He, he shoots a bow and arrow too. So uh, okay. So you got walkie talkie, you go up. Anyways, um, so first thing, first thing that bothers me about this story is that apparently these all-knowing gods, the that, that that's apparently where Kubo's descendants come from is that they are gods or like spiritual they they say they live in the heavens so they have to be they're supernatural in some way one of them even straight when they find them one of them even straight up says that I have destroyed creatures that could put this world on their fingernail so that tells you they are almighty beings mm -hmm. and yet they can't find Kubo Oh, they can only find Kubo at night, and even then, all he hides in is a cave. So that strikes me as odd. That that's you think you would think that they would have to constantly be moving to to stay out of sight, to stay hidden. But they've apparently stayed in this one cave for years, and just because Kubo doesn't go out at night, these gods have never found him. Until he does, until he does stay out night once just once mm -hmm. and they're immediately there and they and they approach him like the twins from the shining oh god I, yep that's exactly what i was thinking too come play with us kubo they don't say that they don't say that exactly but they they <laughs> say it's it in, close. in the same voice exact same voice Play come, with us. Come join us forever, forever and, and ever and ever yep so all you needed was an elevator of blood. Mm -hmm. so there is blood in this movie. Give, there give actually, a yep. Not a lot, but I mean, you at know, at least there's any, something. Any, any at all is kind of shocking in a in a kids movie. But um, so that's okay. That's my first. That's my first gripe with the story. My second gripe is something you also don't like. Is when eventually the twist comes around that the monkey was actually his mother and big fucking shock the beetle is his dad and the beetle is his dad now Ugh. i at first i thought wait are you mean you're actually his mother like his real mother or no, just the <coughs> just the incarnation or like she just she just carries the spirit of his mother spirit incarnation whatever the fuck you can think of okay well that strikes me as a bit odd it really does that one, you've acted nothing like his mother up to this point. Two, it, it would be, you know, it would be interesting if it, if they kind of dropped a few hints to you beforehand, would have made it, um, for me, a much more clever, well, well, personally, I think that I, well, not personally, I do actually think they had the same voice. They probably did, and she, his mother, the mother, it didn't do much talking in, in the opening anyway, so, okay, props to them for that, but still... To me, it just it, it it's a it's not a, it's not a very uh, not a very shocking twist, nor is it very clever because it to me it they they 
it feels too artificially hidden. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like a natural twist of like something that's like, oh, how did I not see that? It's. It's just like. It's oh, too fucking obvious. It's it, too for it's, for me. That's what turned me off. It's too goddamn predictable. It's too obvious. Which, which, and they, which for me denies investment. And they make they just hide it too artificially like even okay there's a part in this movie where they where she fights one of her sisters which are which are some of the the demons or spirits that are trying to get kubo the two aunts the two they, demons they don't make any mention of the fact that she that's like you're oh my sister nothing nothing like that you might say well they don't recognize her because she's a monkey well then later in the movie they she fights her other sister and she immediately recognizes her so what the hell? That that to me makes no sense. And the and the Un, unless the unless the sisters were like twins maybe and had connected minds or whatever. But that's a stretch. It that's never established. So I can't I can't say I I can't say that for sure. So that's so that's my problem with the twist. The other twist is that uh Kubo, you got a really shitty dad. Like your dad's a fucking idiot. He lost his memory. It, does, it shouldn't they, mean they took his memory. It shouldn't mean you lose your intelligence. It shouldn't mean you lose all grasp of reality. God, that's another thing. Again, if they dropped some hints to it, drop some hints that this guy is or is 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 like Hanzo is described in the stories and everything. He looks exactly well. To be fair, the red figurine that turns out to be like the spirit of Hanzo or whatever, it has the it has the it, it's the same the, be, sort the beetle has the almost the exact same look with the the armor, armor, armor armor. Yep, the armor and the hat or whatever. But see that again, that also doesn't make any sense. Why would why wouldn't the figure immediately recognize him as Hanzo? He, if that's, if the, sp if the little red thing is supposed to be the spirit of Hanzo, wouldn't he say, oh, hey, that's me, or wouldn't he try to, <sighs> again, a very artificially hidden twist, and it, and when it comes, it's more just like a, oh, okay, not a, oh, shit. What? Nothing like that. Yeah. He was... Honestly, he was better as a as a dead guy. Which all right. Now now getting into other spoiler heavy stuff. This is what I like about this movie. When they die, they they kill both his mother and his dad as as beetle and as monkey, but they kill them. And they don't come back. They yep. they you see them briefly as spirits, but it's more uh Kubo Basically, t telling him that he's that he's sorry, and oh god, god, it's, gonna, it's hard for me to talk about. This, he's but having it's, he's recreating the embellishment of as he's creating them in f human form through his memories, which is which is the main thing that they not hammer in, but they try and teach the younger viewers is if if there is a death, if there is pain. There, it, it isn't necessary because you still have Mem memories are stronger than anything else. Exactly, and that that's what keeps them alive. It's very, it's very beautifully told and very, very well done, and I and I and I love it. It's a, it's a powerful way to end the, end the movie, and it's what keeps me from hating it. It's just, it just sucks that, that uh, I, all we've seen of this character beforehand was him being an annoying, useless prick. Mm. But oh god, that even even the way he fights um even the way he fights his granddad in the end isn't done isn't done through a straight uh, straight up battle. Yeah, well at at first it is, but but in the end, what it all he does really is uh, uses magic to turn him into human form and erases memories. So that's one way of teaching blank slate. Yeah, it's one way of kind of teaching people how to. How to begin life anew? Begin life anew, be good, do good. You know, tell a new story. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It may, you know, again, we're probably we're probably explaining it a lot worse than the way the movie tells it, but it just, oh, it just does it so well. And actually, I think the that 
bit of ending, that bit of fighting was borrowed from Paranorman because of all the verbal stuff that Par that Norman says to. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The the villain in that. Yeah, I was thinking Samurai Jack from the actual like sword fighting bits, but you know, it's, it's sword sword fighting is kind of universal, so. Hmm. So, but so good, good stuff outweighs yeah, the bad. Yeah, and some of the good stuff is, like, phenomenally good. That's why, I, I guess really that's, I, as I said before, that's why it's irritating that it does s stupid stuff on top of the really, really good stuff. Mm, yeah, I guess. And, yeah, I just wish the again, I just wish the, like, experience and the again the, the boring twists and the not as well played out story wish they were stronger but still it's good yep so next week i'm making sure that we see don't breathe okay and i don't care and you're not gonna ch well okay i'm I, I, uh, <laughs> I brought I brought this okay we've been we've been arguing about this for from every video since uh since we first saw this trailer but he basically he says oh it's okay if they rob the house cuz they're just kids and they just want they just want money so they can leave the terrible neighborhood they're in and I tell that to my dad and he's like well all right torturing the kids is a little bit morally gray but honestly I'd probably do the same in his in his position so even my dad agrees with me these kids deserve to fucking die you broke into his house you held him at gunpoint you have no excuse I sympathize with the two good hearted ones at least I, just, I, no. just apply it to yourself for a second I break into your house I'm stealing your shit I, I only punch you and knock you senseless and then call the police. I don't try and fucking slash your throat and gut you. That's what this guy is trying to do. It's his house, bitch. Do what he wants. They're still, they're still hit, but even though they threw out their morals, he can still hold on to his. He decides to throw his away and just go straight to murder. They were going to murder him. Why does he, why does he have... Yeah, no, the only one that tried to murder him gets murdered. The other two don't. They don't have guns on them. Do you, do you stop and think that maybe this guy is genuinely scared? No. If he, no, with the way that he, like, took care of the first kid, there's no way in hell that he's gonna be scared of two other people. He, he could be, like... What are these? What are these kids gonna do? Do they have guns? Do they realize I'm blind now and maybe they're gonna kill me out of nowhere? No, because they took the he took the one weapon that they it, had. How does he know that's the one weapon they have? Because the other because shit. <sighs> that's gonna be an inter it's gonna be an interesting review. Yes, and oh, uh, and it's been getting it's been getting a lot of praise even from pre screenings. And I just pray to God that it's as good as I hope it is. And it's from the creators of Evil Dead. You should. You should like get the behind new, that. The new Evil Dead, not not the old Evil Dead, not Sam Raimi. It could be. I'll do a little bit more research later. All right. Not that the new Evil Dead was bad. I'm just saying it's you know let's not let's not give credit where it's not due. <sighs> Either way, you look look forward to that. Probably yes. probably be a ma massive pissing contest between me and him. Pretty much. Yeah. It'll be our main event. Yep. Of the summer. Until then, go see Kubo. Yes, I I do recommend this very much so. Yep. Doom 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 doom. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody.